Matt Bernier and Dan Illman taking a look back at the Grade 3 Gallant Bob from Parks on Saturday afternoon. Happened to be Pennsylvania Derby Saturday down at Parks. But this was for the three-year-olds going three-quarters of a mile on the main track. And there were heavy favorites, and it was a coupled entry. You had Petrov and Colfront as they break from the gate. We know what Colfront's game is. He's got big speed, and we see it here. He's got big speed, and this is just a big performance for Colfront. And unfortunately, Colfront was injured after this race, and his career is in jeopardy. But he shows big early speed. Keep an eye, though, on the number five American pastime who's going to finish second in this race. He's in the green silks, moving up on the outside. Stutter step start in the sixth path right now. You get Colfront on the front end, 22-1 and one with Aquamarine, who's a legitimately quick horse for Wayne Lucas out there, pushing him along. They're going to get the half mile in 45. And one, again, like Dan said, keep an eye on those green and yellow silks on the outside because American pastime, he's doing all this on his own. Ken hasn't moved on him yet. He's losing a lot of ground, and again, that start was not advantageous to him. He is looming up three wide right now. He's actually going to put a head in front of Cole Front at some point, but uh, Todd Pletcher, John Velasquez, they eventually put up the no passing sign. These top two, they throw it down here. You're going to see a little bit late with the lead change with American Pastime, or I shouldn't even say late, but a little bit hard with it. But they're going to go on, and it's going to look like American Pastime has a full head of steam. Cold Front refuses to be denied. Just extremely game from Cold Front. And a lot of people did think maybe this inside was not the place to be at Parks. You see Cold Front battle back. It looks pretty good to me. Oh, there's, uh, to me, that is one of the main cases against the idea of inside being bad. Because if it was, he has no chance. Cold Front gets the job done as one part of the coupled entry. Pays $3.60. And obviously, if you had Petrov as your pick, you still got Cold Front in there. So your place price two twenty, dollars but your show price... How about that? 260. And that's again, okay. Because they both run in the top three. American Pastime rounds out your exacta. $2 comes back $12.60. Cole Front earns a 107 buyer here in this effort here, winning the Gallant Bob. And as Dan mentioned earlier in the video, unfortunately, sounds like it's a career threatening injury. Doesn't sound like it's a, a complete sealed deal, but um, things don't sound optimistic as far as racing is concerned. He's having surgery today. Uh, with his September the 25th, yeah. as we're taping this right now. Todd Pletcher is hoping that we can get this horse back in 2018. We, of course, are hoping that he can get back to the races because this was a brilliant performance. It is a shame he got hurt because he all of a sudden was on the radar for the Breeders' Cup sprint after this race. You mentioned the figure. He has only run five times. Imagine if there's even a little bit more upside potential. Unfortunately, though, that injury is going to knock him out, at the very least, certainly done for the year. And obviously, uh, we hope that we get to see him on the racetrack. Let's just say we do get to see him again at some point. Are you concerned that through his five lifetime starts, four of them he's made the lead, he's won them all, the one that he didn't was the one that he lost, and that was in the H. Allen Jerkins. Is he the kind of horse that you think needs the lead? Uh, it's, it's quite possible. I, I think the jury is still out there. The H. Allen Jerkins was kind of the first real tough test he had in his career. He got a little bit of a class drop here in the Gallant Bob, but it's too soon to tell. Right now, certainly all the, the evidence is he is a need-the-lead true speed horse. He's also a very fast horse in races like this, going to get the lead more often than not. American Pastime is another very lightly raced horse for Bob Hess. Kent DeSormo has the ride here, uh, considering he was slow into stride, missed the break there. Kent angled him out. I thought Kent did everything he could here, and the horse pulled him right into the race. I think this was a very promising effort. This is a horse, there's always been some buzz about him in okay. Southern California, and Hess has proceeded very slowly. Uh, this was a, a pretty big sign of confidence. Absolutely. He was willing to ship all the way across the country, run against Pletcher's cold front. American passed him, that, that break cost him. Uh, this is a horse that can certainly be closer to the pace. He did not break very well, very, very wide, losing ground on the turn. This was a breakthrough performance for American past time. He got, what, a 105, 105 buyer speed figure. He has only run a few times as well. This is the kind of horse that if Hess decides, well, maybe the Breeders' Cup sprint is is a possibility, he floats in there under the radar. I think he at least he deserves to be in the discussion. Something to keep in the back of your mind as well. He has not only run over the Del Mar surface, he's won over the Del Mar surface, something we know we all talked about during the summer meeting there. As far as the rest of the field is concerned, they're a notch or three below the top two. That doesn't mean that they're not talented and can't do some good things. Petrov, it's always felt like one turn is what he wants. I didn't think all things considered he ran poorly. He's had a really nice campaign, hasn't he? He was probably at distances a little bit farther than he wanted to at Oakland while on the Triple Crown Trail. They've uh, generally and gradually backed him up in distance. He was perfectly fine here. I think he is a grade two, grade three sort that could be a very useful sprinter, sort of maybe fitting the Whitmore mold next yeah. year at Oak Lawn Park for trainer Ron Moquette, uh, but not in the league of Cold Front and American Anthem. Ann Arboretti, you and I have been fans of this horse. He's a cowbred. It seems like, okay, they've taken a couple shots against Tougher. 
Is it time to get back to the Calbreds? Absolutely. It's time yeah. to get back to the Calbreds. Ann Arbor, Eddie, I think I like about seven. Like about okay. six and a half, seven furlongs, especially against Calbreds. He has a lot of heart, this horse, and this is just a little bit too tough. He was almost the traveling companion for yeah. IRAP. You got the feeling. You know they like to move in bunches, yes. those, uh, those Doug O'Neill uh, Redham runners. Uh, as far as, the, I suppose, the disappointment of the race, it would be excitations. Now, I think Mike Beer and I agreed, and I think you agree as well. Excitations was the kind of horse that... On Amsterdam Day, he was on the inside, and you needed to be on the inside, and it felt, I don't want to say like he was dressed up, but like he was kind of dressed up. Well, that was against Cold Front, right? And Cold yeah. Front was able to make the lead, and Excitations was from the back of the packet. That rail was a conveyor belt. Yeah. They ran one, two around the track. Excitations, though, is the kind of horse, you get the feeling he needs a lot of pace. Yeah. And the pace was fair here. It wasn't right. blazing. It wasn't slow. And this was a disappointing performance, though, that he just failed to fire. Cold Front, unfortunately, he exits this race with an injury. Hopefully, we get to see him again on the racetrack next year after a success surgery here but guess what he got the job done he's a graded stakes winner he wins the grade three gallant bob with a 107 buyer